respected seniors, teachers, faculty members, and delegates. Greetings from IAP Neocon 2021. I am Dr. Rajagopalan, coordinator, IAP Neocon 2021. Let us start the 21st webinar of Learn from the Legends, international bi-monthly webinar series, and academic initiative of IAP Neochap, which is organized by National Neonatology Forum, Kerala, and Indian Academy of Pediatrics, Trishu branch. We have nearly 4,000 registration from 75 countries for this scientific feast. A warm welcome to all delegates in Zoom platform, as well as YouTube channel on behalf of IAP Neochap for today's program. Today, we have an eminent faculty, Professor Dr. Subair Agai from Thomas Jefferson University, Philadelphia. USA to address an important topic, umbilical cord management in non-vigorous neonates, updates and future. We welcome you, sir, for today's webinar. Two senior experts in neonatology of our country are moderators for today's session, Dr. Mohit Sahani from Surat and Dr. Amit Ubadhyaya from Meerat. Hearty welcome to both of you to the webinar. Now. I request moderators to take over the proceedings. Over to moderators. Hello. Good evening, everyone, and good morning, Professor Zubair. Uh, we are lucky that uh, we are like being a part of this. I know there are a lot of issues online, things are happening, but NNF Kerala, Dr. Manoj, and team have done a wonderful work for this uh, Learn from the Legend series. And today's topic uh, umbilical cord management in non vigorous newborn like by from the legend itself dr zubair so uh, there like we know it's in its guidelines for the normal babies and everything to clamp the cord at 60 seconds is the norm but for the non vigorous babies every time we used to hear you know what to do because there were no clear cut guidelines either we used to, we should have a very modified specialized trolleys which are very costly lifestyle or something like that to have by the mother's side to, to do that. But what is being now updated uh, things regarding that, it will be, uh, you know, nice. And I am really excited to hear from the horse's own mouth. So I would like Dr. Amit Upadhyay to please introduce Professor Zubair. Thank you very much. Hello, thank you. Um, Dr. Zubair has been uh, a, a great academician and a clinician. Uh, Dr. Zubair H. Agahi had done his MBBS from India. So I would begin with that itself that uh, Dr. Agahi had done his MBBS and MD pediatrics from Nagpur Government Medical College. And so uh, he is a proud Indian. Since then, he did his uh, American Academy of Pediatrics qualification followed by a fellowship in neonatology, uh, neonatal perinatal medicine. And I'm so happy to read that he was he stood third among almost 3,000 candidates who appeared for, the, for this exam. So he's an excellent academician. After that, he has joined uh, Sydney Kimmel Medical School at uh, Thomas Jefferson University in uh, Philadelphia, USA. He's a program director there and he's director of neonatology research. And um, um, <clears throat> he has more than 75 peer-reviewed publications. He has more than 200 international conference presentations and he has had the uh, American Lung Association, Gerber Foundation, NIH and his areas of research include neonatal sepsis, HIE, umbilical cord management in, on which he will uh, deliver his talk today, on non-invasive ventilation, epigenetic and chorionitis and biomarkers for BPD. And uh, so with this introduction back to you Dr. Mohit. So please thank introduce that topic. Yeah, thank you, Dr. Amit. So now we everyone everyone knows now that the topic is like is what to do with the umbilical cord if there is non vigorous baby. So I would request and welcome Dr. Professor Zubair to kindly start his presentation, please. Yeah, thank you, Dr. Amit and Dr. Mohit for a kind introduction and. Um, uh, thank you, Dr. Manoj and NNF uh, Kerala for inviting me for this talk. 
uh, it's a real uh, pleasure and honor to be talking on this uh, forum. And I would also like to thank the audience for choosing to join my talk on this Saturday night instead of having uh, fun. Uh, so I'll start uh, with my talk. I have uh, nothing to disclose uh, except I will be uh, using uh, data from uh, several papers uh, by Anu Katheria. He has done a pioneering research in uh, umbilical cord management uh, in a newborn baby. And I will also be using a few illustrations uh, prepared by Satyan. Uh, we all know Satyan is a great neonatologist, a uh, great teacher and a researcher, but he's also an excellent illustrator. And so I'll be using some of his uh, uh, pictures in my talk. Uh, let me just start with uh, some simple questions. Uh, you can answer this on uh, Google poll. Uh, you have a term baby who's uh, vigorous at birth. Baby is crying, baby is breathing, has a normal tone. How long do you wait before clamping the cord? Will you do immediate cord clamping or you will wait for 30 to 60 seconds, one to three minutes and more than 30 minutes before you clamp the cord or you will perform umbilical cord milking? Uh, let us uh, start. Uh, the answers. Uh, we'll give about 25 to 30 seconds for you to answer this question. Okay, I'm uh, really happy that most of you will do a delayed cord clamping on this uh, baby. Let's uh, do a second baby who's a preterm baby. Uh, similar, uh, similarly, baby is a vigorous at birth. Uh, baby is crying, breathing, and in normal tone. How long do you wait before you clamp? Again, we will do the poll and wait for 25 to 30 seconds. Yeah, thank you again for answering this uh, question. Uh, if your answer for both preterm and term baby uh, who are vigorous at birth, uh, you will wait for uh, cart, uh, clamping the cart for one to three minutes, probably uh, you are right because that's what is recommended by uh, WHO. But if your answer is uh, 30 to 60 seconds, that's uh, correct too because ACOG, the AAP, and NR NRP recommend delayed cart clamping for 30 to 60 seconds. Uh, the umbilical cord milking is not currently recommended for uh, premature babies or term babies. Uh, who are vigorous at birth. Uh, this is my next question. Uh, where do you place the baby while performing uh, umbilical cord milk, uh, umbil delayed cord clamping at or below the level of placenta or over mother's abdomen or chest?
Yeah, thank you again for answering that question. Uh, most of you will place the baby or mother's abdomen or chest. Uh, both answers are correct, but if you are keeping the baby or mother's abdomen or chest, 30 to 60 seconds of delayed cord clamping may not be sufficient, and I will explain this uh, in my talk. Uh, let's go to the next question. Now you have a term baby who's uh, depressed at birth. Uh, baby is uh, not breathing, not crying. Baby is hypotonic and pale. Um, how will you manage uh, the cord clamping on this baby? Will you do an immediate cord clamping or you will wait for 30 to 60 seconds or one to three minutes before clamping the cord? Or will you start bag and, bag and mask ventilation and clamp the cord after one minute? or you will perform on lighter cord milking. Again, you have 25, 30 seconds to answer these questions. And uh, thank you again for participating in this uh, question. That's uh, really give uh, information how you're managing this baby. So most of the bear, most of you will do uh, immediate cord clamping. Some of you do bag and mask uh, ventilation. I saw a few of them will perform uh, umbilical cord milking. What about in preterm baby who who is a depressed at birth? Uh, baby is not crying, not breathing, hypotonic. How will you manage uh, the cord on this baby? Will you do an immediate cord clamping or wait for 30 to 60 seconds, one to three minutes, or use a bag and mass ventilation or perform umbilical cord milking? Okay, thank you again for answering that question. Again, uh, most of you will do a immediate cord clamping. Some of you will do a bag and mass ventilation. Few will do a umbilical cord milking. So the babies who are depressed at birth, the current recommendation by WHO, ACOG, NRP is a immediate cord clamping. Uh, but helping baby breathe, uh, recommend if possible, you can do a ba bag and mass ventilation and cord clamping after one minute. Uh, performing umbilical cord milking is a good idea, but currently it's not recommended in uh, vigorous or non vigorous both babies. So um, uh, at least still we get more information, more data we should not be performing umbilical cord milking ex except in a clinical trial. So placental transfusion uh, with a delayed cord clamping is a no cost low tech intervention that can have huge impact on both short and long-term outcomes in uh, preterm and term infant. But despite a strong recommendation from 35 organizations, clinicians are still reluctant to adopt delayed cord clamping. And I was happy to see the poll that uh, most of you, they are doing, a, you are doing a delayed cord clamping uh, in preterm and full-term babies. So these are the goals for my talk today. I will briefly talk about a delayed or deferred cord clamping and umbilical cord milking in a vigorous infant. Then I will compare umbilical cord milking and delayed cord clamping. And then I will uh, talk in detail about option for placental transfusion in non-vigorous infant. So at birth in term baby, 67% of blood volume is in a baby, is in baby and 33% is in placenta. In preterm baby, 50% of blood volume is in baby and 50% is in placenta. Placental transfusion is a transfer of 
placental blood to the baby during the first few minutes after birth. And this can be achieved either by a delayed cord clamping or umbilical cord milking, which can be an intact cord milking or cut cord milking. At birth, a spontaneous respiration and opening of the lung leads to pulling of substantial volume of blood into the lung and the babies are relatively hypovolemic immediately after birth. So placental transfusion increases the infant's blood volume and perfusion to important organ and help in transition from fetal to neonatal circulation with minimal alteration in cerebral blood flow. Placental transfusion also supply extra immunoglobulin that may reduce infection uh, supplies extra red cell that may reduce blood transfusion and improve iron store. Fetal blood is also a rich source of stem cells that may help in organ repair, especially in premature baby and infant with uh, HIE. In delayed cord clamping, the cord is left unclaimed for a short period of time after birth and the blood from placenta passes to infant. ACOG, NRP, AAP, and WHO, and other 35 organization recommends delayed cord clamping for 30 seconds to three minutes in a vigorous preterm and term units. With delayed cord clamping, approximately 25 ml of blood is a transfer from placenta to baby. More blood is transferred with the vaginal delivery than by C-section. And I will explain this in my uh, next slide uh, prepared by uh, Satyan. So there are four important factors that determine transfer of blood from placenta to baby. Uterine contraction, uh, gravity, uh, negative intrathoracic pressure generated by spontaneous respiration, and timing of cord plank, clamping. With each uterine contraction, placenta is squeezed and the blood from placenta goes to the baby. So if the babies are born by the uterine, either there is no uterine contraction or ineffective uterine contraction. So the baby is born by C-section, they receive less uh, blood from placenta. If you place the baby at or below the level of placenta, um, the gravity facilitated a transfer of blood from placenta to baby. But if you are putting a baby on abdomen and chest, uh, as I said before, the, you're not getting a benefit of gravity. Uh, and the benefit of gravity is controversial, but probably 30 to 60 seconds of delayed cord clamping may not be effective on this baby. So babies who are depressed at birth or who are uh, not crying, there's a no negative th thoracic pressure. Uh, the negative th thoracic pressure with a spontaneous respiration pulls the blood from placenta to the baby. So if the baby is not breathing or you cut the cord before baby starts um, breathing, then there is a decreased transfer of blood from placenta to baby. And the timing of the card, the longer you keep the card intact, there's a more transfer of blood. Most of the blood is transferred from placenta to baby in one to three minutes. So this is the benefit of delayed card clamping in preterm babies. Uh, this is a meta-analysis from 18 randomized clinical trial, and that shows 32% decrease in mortality in preterm babies with a delayed cord clamping compared to early cord clamping. If you compare two other uh, therapy that has a huge impact on mortality in preterm baby, antenatal steroid and surfactant for RDS. Antenatal steroid decreases mortality by 31% and surfactant reduces mortality by 10 to 40 percent. So reduction in mortality by delayed cord clamping 
is similar to the use of antenatal steroid in premature baby and may be a better than use of surfactant in preterm babies. These are some other benefits of delayed cord clamping in preterm babies compared to immediate cord clamping. Delayed cord clamping decreases the need for inotrope for hypotension. It decreases the need for blood transfusion and decreases any IVH uh, in premature baby. There is also trends towards <clears throat> lower PVL, late onset sepsis and treatment for ROP with the delayed cord clamping in premature baby. But there is a trend towards higher treatment for PDA with uh, delayed cord clamping in premature babies. Delayed cord clamping in premature baby also improves iron stores at four months and neurodevelopmental outcomes at two years in preterm babies. These are the benefits of delayed cord clamping in term babies. In term babies, delayed cord clamping improves hemoglobin and iron stores. And a meta-analysis from five randomized controlled trials um, shows that delayed cord clamping in full-term baby reduces risk for iron deficiency at three and six months of age. As you all know, iron deficiency is common during early in infancy. We recently reported that 20% of neonates admitted to the NICU have low MCV, suggestive of iron deficiency. We have been taught that fetus is a perfect parasite. Even if mother is iron deficient, the newborn babies are not iron deficient. This is, or this may not be true. Uh, this is a study from China. We showed 45% of infant born to mothers with iron deficiency were iron deficient at birth. And iron deficiency is very common during pregnancy. 40 to 80% of pregnant mother, they have iron deficiency. As you all know, iron is very important during the critical period of brain development. And iron deficiency at birth or during early infancy is associated with long-term neurodevelopmental impairment. Delayed cord clamping also increases myelin content at four months of age in brain region associated with motor sensor, sensory and visual processing and function in term babies. Delayed cord clamping improves neurodevelopmental outcomes at four years of age in full-term babies. This is an unexpected benefit of placental transfusion or delayed cord clamping. Uh, this is a study from Kenya. Anemia and iron deficiency at time of vaccination decrease response to diphtheria, pertussis, and pneumococcal vaccine, and iron supplementation increase humoral vaccine response. Placental transfusion can increase vaccination response by preventing iron deficiency in this critical period. Delayed cord clamping is also associated with increased risk of polycythemia, but there was no difference in symptomatic polycythemia in term babies. Delayed cord clamping also increases jaundice, but in term baby, the risk of phototherapy was increased by only 2%. And in, in preterm babies, there was increase in peak bilirubin level, but no significant increase in use of phototherapy. As you know, delayed cord clamping may jeopardize timely resuscitation. That's why it's not recommended by most of the organization in a babies who are depressed at birth. But placenta continue to perform gas exchange and ventilation with intact cord is one of the option in a babies who are depressed at birth. Uh, this term, going to the last mile, comes from telecommunication and cable industry. 
it's very easy to take the cable or phone line to a city, but the hardest part is distributing it to each and every household. The same problem is with the delayed car clamping and going to the last mile. Uh, despite strong recommendations from 35 organization and proven benefit, delayed car clamping is not routinely performed in neonates. In California, 42% of preterm babies admitted to the NICU did not receive delayed car clamping. And in Canada, 40% of preterm infants admitted to an ICU did not receive delayed car clamping. In China, only 30% of hospitals included delayed car clamping in early newborn care, care practice. I'm sure there's the same problem in, in India. So we have, to, we have to go to that last mile. We need to convince our OB colleagues that delayed car clamping is really important and should be performed in every baby who's uh, vigorous at birth. Uh, delayed car clamping or placental transfusion is the easiest and cheapest way of decreasing mortality in premature babies and improving a uh, few IQ points in all babies. Improving few IQ points makes a big difference in everybody's life. I wish uh, Donald Trump had a delayed card clamping, uh, but I'm not sure improving few IQ points uh, to him would have made any difference. Now I'm switching to umbilical card milking. Umbilical cord milking is a milking of umbilical cord two to, feed, two to five times towards baby immediately after birth. It provides similar blood transfer as two minutes of delayed cord clamping. These are the differences between delayed cord clamping and umbilical cord milking. Uh, in delayed cord clamping, there is a passive transfer of blood. It is a gravity dependent. It's a time sensitive and it's a dependent on mode of delivery. There is a decreased transfer of blood in a baby is born by C-section. Uh, it also depends on the spontaneous breathing in a baby who are not breathing, there is a decreased transfer of blood uh, when you're doing a delayed card clamping. Uh, compared to that, the uh, umbilical cord milking, there is an active transfer of blood, is independent of gravity. There is a minimal delay, so we can do it in babies who are depressed at birth. Uh, it is uh, independent of delivery, so you can have a good amount of blood transfusion in a babies who are born by C-section. It's not affected by spontaneous breathing, so you can do umbilical cord milking in a babies who are depressed at birth. And probably there is a more transfer of stem cells with uh, umbilical cord milking because milking of the umbilical cord the strips some meson mesenchyme stem cells from the endothelium those uh, stem cells are uh, gone to the babies so what are the advantages of umbilical cord milking uh, umbilical cord milking can be done in a babies who are depressed at birth and need immediate uh, resuscitation. It may also assist with earlier onset of breathing. In an older study, more infant breathed before cord clamping with uh, umbilical cord mil milking compared to delayed cord clamping. And uh, as I said before, the blood transfer after the blood after umbilical cord milking probably contains more. Uh, mesenchymal stem cells. And this is the milking is a more efficient way of transferring blood from baby, uh, from placenta to the baby in infant born by C section. And in one of our study from ANOP, the neurodevelopment outcome was better at 24 months with the umbilical cord milking compared to delayed cord clamping in preterm babies. So umbilical cord milking can be done with uh, intact cord milking where the cord is connected to placenta and you milk cord after a refill two to four times 
towards baby, it takes uh, less than 15 to 20 uh, seconds. And probably there is a greater volume of placental transfusion with uh, uh, milking with an intact cord because the cord is refilling with after each milking. The cut umbilical cord milking uh, is uh, when a long segment of umbilical cord around 20 to 30 centimeter is cut immediately after birth. And then the neonatologist or the pediatric provider untwist and milk entire con content of, of the cord into the baby, but there's no refilling because the cord is, uh, the cord is already cut. But this can be performed while we are resuscitating baby. And a small study from Japan has shown uh, there is a similar amount of blood transfer with a cut umbilical cord milking compared to intact cord milking. How we are cutting the cord before the onset of respiration can have adverse consequences, which I will explain in later slide. So comparing umbilical cord milking with the immediate cord clamping in preterm babies, again, the umbilical cord milking uh, reduces the need for blood transfusion in premature baby, but there was no difference in mortality. There was a trend towards a decreased IVH, uh, decreased severe IVH, decreased necrotizing enterocolitis, and decreased treatment for ROP with the uh, umbilical cord milking compared to immediate cord clamping in preterm babies. This is a comparison between umbilical cord milking with the delayed cord clamping in preterm babies. Uh, there was no significant difference in mortality with the umbilical cord milking compared to delayed cord clamping in preterm baby. And there was no significant difference in any IVH uh, in a baby who received umbilical cord milking versus delayed cord clamping. But uh, this is concerning. Umbilical cord milking was associated with uh, increased severe IVH compared to delayed cord clamping in preterm babies. Uh, this increase was almost twofold with umbilical cord milking in premature baby. And this result is uh, driven by uh, this large study, uh, Anoop, who published this in uh, JAMA uh, last year on association of umbilical cord milking with a delayed cord clamping. Uh, and the primary outcome was death or severe intraventricular hemorrhage. Um, there was no significant difference in primary outcome of death or severe intraventricular hemorrhage uh, in a baby who received umbilical cord milking versus a delayed cord clamping. But uh, this study was uh, stopped in between by DSMB because a subgroup of infant born between 23 weeks and 27 weeks of gestation, there was a significant increase in uh, severe IVH with umbilical cord milking. Uh, about 22% of infant who received umbilical cord milking in this subgroup had a severe IVH compared to only 6% baby who received a delayed cord clamping. But they did not see any difference in severe intraventricular hemorrhage in a larger babies born between 28 and 31 weeks of gestation. In fact, none of the 143 babies born between 28 and 31 weeks of gestation who received umbilical cord milking had a severe intraventricular hemorrhage. So the DSMB, after reviewing this, uh, they permitted to continue this study on a bigger baby and I am excited to see the long-term effect of umbilical cord milking uh, on these uh, premature babies. So benefit of umbilical cord milking in term baby. So this is a study, these are the five randomized control trial compared umbilical cord milking with the uh, immediate cord clamping in term babies. And three of these trials was performed by our moderator, uh, Amit, and his team. So umbilical cord milking compared to immediate cord clamping improve blood pressure, hemoglobin within the first few days of life, and iron store at six weeks. 
but the most important umbilical cord milking was not associated with any harm in this uh, five randomized controlled trial. This is a meta-analysis on comparing umbilical cord milking with a delayed cord clamping in term babies. Um, so the hemoglobin level at birth at 48 hours and the serum bilirubin at 48 hours were similar in umbilical cord milking group versus delayed cord clamping group, uh, suggesting both umbilical cord milking and uh, delayed cord clamping have a similar placental transfusion in a full-term baby. Uh, there was a higher hematocrit uh, hemoglobin level at six weeks with the uh, umbilical cord uh, milking. So maybe the umbilical cord milking is more efficient way of placental transfusion. I think many of these babies were born by C-section, so that's why they're showing a better uh, placental transfusion. Now I'm switching my gear and I will talk about uh, placental transfusion in a non vigorous infants. We all know the infant who are depressed at birth, uh, they require resuscitation, and these infants are at increased risk for HIE. Five to seven percent of all infants require resuscitation at birth. An improvement in the delivery room management could improve long term outcome. Uh, we have shown that about 25% of infants who are depressed at birth uh, develop moderate to severe HIE. And all we all know that HIE is the one of the leading causes of uh, neonatal mortality, not only in India, uh, all over the world, and 20% of neonatal death being directly linked to HIE. The incidence of HIE is uh, one to three per thousand birth in high income countries and it is 15 to 20 times greater than greater in low and middle income countries the only effective therapy for hie is a therapeutic hypothermia but even after therapeutic hypothermia 50 percent of infant with moderate to severe hie either die or develop moderate to severe neurological deficit. The therapeutic hypothermia is not available in and therapeutic hypothermia does not reduce neonatal mortality in low and middle income countries. I'm sure you all aware of um, well-designed uh, helix trial on therapeutic hypothermia for HI in low and middle income countries. Uh, the results of this study is not published yet, so I don't know how much results we can discuss now. But uh, Dr. Thayil, he presented some of the data in hot topics uh, in neonatology last month. And I can say that the results of this trial is uh, disappointing. So we emergently need some neuroprotective strategies for HIE. And these are some of the intervention and therapy uh, un undergoing clinical trial at this time. And two of them is a umbilical cord, stem cell transplant, and placental transfusion. Umbilical cord blood is a rich source of stem cells. Uh, in animal models of HIE, umbilical cord blood mononuclear cell transplant transplantation showed improved neurological outcomes. Uh, there are two published, uh, recently published pilot studies on safety and feasibility of autologous cord blood cells for infants with HIE. In our lab, we estimated the number of mononuclear sites uh, a term neonat receive after umbilical cord milking or delayed cord clamping. And this number is similar to those used by those pilot study. So probably the umbilical cord milking or delayed cord clamping or placental transfusion is same as autologous 
cordless uh, blood cell transplantation. So the neonates who are depressed at birth, they are likely to benefit most from placental transfusion. We all know the neonates who are depressed at birth, they are hypovolemic and placental transfusion can increase, uh, can improve that hypovolemia and increase perfusion to brain. Um, the cord blood also uh, provides stem cells and growth factor. Uh, Sandberg rightly described delayed cord clamping as a nature's first stem cell transplant. Placental transfusion also prevent iron deficiency and may improve uh, neurodevelopmental outcome. But currently, most of the organi uh, organization do not recommend uh, delayed cord clamping in a babies who are depressed at birth, uh, except helping baby breathe. Uh, they recommend a ventilation with intact cord. So there are two options for placental transfusion in a depressed neonate, umbilical cord milking and ventilation with intact cord. The umbilical cord milking can be uh, intact cord milking or cut cord milking. So umbilical cord milking does not infer, uh, interfere with the resuscitation, so can be used in a babies who are depressed at birth. This is a simple technique, does not require extensive training or additional staff. And most of the infant who are depressed at birth, they are born by C-section. And we know there is a if more efficient uh, transfer of blood uh, with umbilical cord milking uh, compared to delayed cord clamping in a baby born by C-section. Uh, and probably there are more stem cells with uh, umbilical cord milking uh, because of the stripping of the umbilical cord and release of the mesenchymal uh, cells from the endothelium. But there is a concern for increased blood flow to the brain with the uh, umbilical cord milking, especially if the baby is not breathing and the lungs are not open. So all the blood we are pushing to the baby is going into the systemic circulation. And especially this is concerning for premature babies uh, and we have a very premature baby, umbilical cord milking can cause uh, intraventricular hemorrhage. This is again a uh, certain uh, picture. The babies who are depressed at birth, they have low left ventricular preload uh, because of the loss of fetal or neonatal blood from nuchal cord or placental abruption, uh, decrease uh, venous return because of lack of negative intrathoracic pressure and the baby is not breathing or has a poor respiratory effort or decrease uh, return of blood from unventilated lung. All those contribute into a low left ventricular preload. Umbilical cord milking restore this uh, left ventricular preload and improve uh, pulmonary and cerebral blood flow. Umbilical cord milking can also stimulate uh, respiration. So ours was the first study published on umbilical cord milking for neonates who are depressed at birth. This was a randomized trial of safety and feasibility was performed in uh, Nagpur. Uh, Minakshi Grish was the one who really helped on this trial. We randomized uh, 50 uh, depressed neonates to umbilical cord milking and 51 depressed neonates uh, were in control group and they received immediate cord clamping and we use a intact cord clamping in our uh, intact cord milking in our study. So we did not see we did not see any difference in Abgar score or uh, the delivery room resuscitation effort in the two group. So the conclusion was umbilical cord milking was feasible and safe in a depressed neonate. Another study was published after our, our study, this study is from Bangalore, and this was done in a preterm baby. Uh, they randomized 30 
a preterm baby who were depressed at birth to cord milking group and they use a uh, cut umbilical cord milking and the uh, 30 infant in a control group who received who are depressed at birth but received immediate cord clamping they also didn't see any difference in apgar score crip score or resuscitation uh, effort in the two groups there was significant increase in hemoglobin and serum ferritin at 6 weeks in a baby who received a uh, cord milking uh, and it, this indicate that a uh, cord umbilical cord milking can be efficient in placental transfusion there are some ongoing trials on umbilical cord milking in depressed infant and the first study is a uh, anoop study this is a cluster randomized control trial with a crossover uh, he's planning to enroll 200 1200 uh, non vigorous uh, term babies <clears throat> and he's comparing umbilical cord milking with the uh, immediate cord clamping and his outcomes are uh, in icu admission and uh, neurodevelopmental assessment at 2 years of age i think he has a uh, enroll more than half of uh, the babies for this trial and it looks like probably um, umbilical cord milking is safe because the dsmb has not uh, stopped this clinical trial and i am really excited to see the results of uh, this trial the second one is a uh, dr manoj at uh, jubilee mission medical college he is doing a trial on umbilical cord milking using a cut umbilical cord uh his control is immediate cord clamping he's planning to enroll 400 depressed babies uh at term and his outcome is a <clears throat> incidence and severity of hie i think he is also completing his trial and we are excited to see uh, the results from this trial and this is the study we are planning uh, cluster uh, cluster crossover randomized clinical trial uh, on short and long term outcomes of umbilical cord milking in neonates who are depressed at birth our pick a question is uh, the infant uh, equal to and more than 35 weeks of gestation who are depressed at birth um, compared to umbilical cord milking uh, with the uh, immediate cord clamping is there any change in the survival uh, without neurodevelopmental impairment at 2 years of age this will be a cluster crossover randomized uh, clinical trial uh, in seven centers in india uh, the centers will be randomized to either umbilical cord milking or immediate cord clamping and then we'll do a crossover after 6 months we are expecting more than 65000 deliveries uh, 4000 depressed babies and 1000 babies with moderate to severe hie and we will follow this baby at 1 and 2 years for neurodevelopmental outcome and we are expecting uh, we are hopeful that umbilical cord will, milking will improve survival without neurodevelopmental uh, impairment in infant with a moderate to severe hie and reduce incidence of moderate to severe hie the second option for um, placental transfusion in a baby who are depressed at birth is ventilation with intact cord and all you know the helping baby breathe uh, i recommend if possible ventilate baby with intact cord and delay cord clamping for 1 to 3 minutes in depressed infant these are some animal dot animal data the early cord clamping before the onset of onset of ventilation had large changes in heart rate cardiac output arterial and cerebral oxy, oxygenation during transition and ventilation before cord clamping had a smoother transition with a smaller Uh, changes on those vitals this is a observ- observational study we showed in infant without respiration before cord clamping uh, increases the risk of death or nicu admission 
and the risk of death and NICU admission decreased by 20% for every 10 seconds delayed cart clamping after breathing. These are some of the studies published on ventilation with intact card. The first one is a Wentford study. This is a single arm study uh, on 29 premature baby born between 24 and 31 weeks. And <clears throat> they provided uh, ventilation with a CPAP or a positive pressure ventilation uh, with an intact card and they did a cord clamping after 90 seconds. And this study show ventilation with intact card is feasible, but is uh, challenging. Anoop has uh, two studies on ventilation with intact card. The first one is on premature baby, and the second one is on full-term baby. And he didn't see any significant difference in clean up clinical outcome, but also, he also didn't see any a safety problem. The Dooley et al. They have a uh, largest uh, number of babies uh, with uh, ventilation with intact cord. They had 276 babies <clears throat> born between 23 and 31 weeks of gestation, and their control group was immediate cord clamping, and their intervention group was uh, resuscitation if needed and cord clamping at two minutes. They didn't see any difference in clinical outcome, but there was a trend for lower mortality with a, um, with a ventilation with intact card. And recently they published the follow-up data or outcomes at two years of age. And uh, in, this, uh, in, in their cohort, the risk of death or adverse neurodevelopmental outcome was better with uh, ventilation with uh, intact cord. This is uh, another study which was published uh, more recently on intact cord resuscitation versus early cord clamping in a depressed baby. And they were looking at the outcomes in the first 10 minutes after birth. Uh, this was a randomized clinical trial in Nepal and they randomized 93 babies for early cord clamping and 63 baby for ventilation with intact cord. They saw a better oxygen saturation at one, five, and 10 minutes, a better heart rate at one, five, and 10 minutes, and better upgrade scores at one, five, and 10 minutes with the uh, ventilation with intact cord clamping. They also reported a uh, shorter time for uh, cry or shorter time for regular breathing with a uh, intact cord clamping. We don't have much data on the outcome outside the delivery or the long outcome. So we have to wait for those um, data. These are some ongoing or planned trial on ventilation with intact cord. Uh, some of these trial are going to answer on long-term uh, safety and efficacy of ventilation with intact cord. Most of these trials are in premature baby. Uh, this one is in full-term baby. And this trial is an interesting trial. They're comparing a baby with a cord milking and ventilation with intact, intact card. So we all are excited to um, follow the results on those clinical trials. But ventilation with intact card is really uh, challenging. Uh, there are limited space for staff. I don't know how it is done in India now, but when we go for a resuscitation of a baby who is a depressed at birth, there are at least four or five people from the neonatology team. There is a one respiratory therapist, one um, nurse, uh, one or two medical providers. So there are so many people. It's uh, so challenging uh, for a space uh, to resuscitate the baby with the uh, entire card. But there is also a problem with the length of the card. Some uh, deliveries, the length of card is not enough uh, 
for resuscitation of this baby. Another challenge is uh, maintaining a sterile feed uh, and providing a adequate temperature, especially in a premature baby. So this might be a solution, the purposeful resuscitation table. I'm sure this is going to be expensive, but this is also going to take a, a lot of space. And I don't know how technically this will be possible, but we are excited to look forward for the results from their studies. So I'm going to complete my talk here with uh, some take home messages. Uh, Delayed car clamping saves life. It decreases mortality by 32% in premature baby. So delayed car clamping has the same effect in decreasing mortality as antenatal steroid and may be uh, better uh, in decreasing mortality by giving a surfactant to the baby. Uh, delayed cord clamping improves iron stores and prevent iron deficiency during the critical period of um, brain development. Uh, delayed cord clamping improves neurodevelopmental outcome. Uh, umbilical cord milking can be an alternative to delayed cord clamping, but it is not currently recommended uh, as a standard of care or routine practice. Uh, we still need to do this in a research setting. Uh, and we know the umbilical cord milking increases risk of severe IVH in extremely premature babies uh, less than uh, 28 weeks of gestation. So for infant who are uh, depressed at birth, the uh, current recommendation from the most of the organization is a uh, immediate cord clamping but uh, the helping baby breathe recommend uh, consider ventilation with intact cord. Um, the ventilation with intact cord and umbilical cord milking uh, can potentially improve outcomes in neonates who are depressed at birth, but we need more study for safety and for efficacy of a placental transfusion in this subgroup of babies who are uh, depressed at birth. So we should continue our uh, delayed cord clamping till God or the nature goes high tech and starts delivering less babies. Thank you very much. And I can take some questions. Um, thanks a lot, uh, Professor Zubair. It was a great presentation and Yes, it has brought in the main, like, you know, you mentioned a lot of studies you have mentioned and your experiences you have shared regarding umbilical cord milking, which is being great way and very safe way. Like I, I can add on the by being the editor of one of uh, a neonatology journal of India. And there is a one paper which is going to be published. They have done a very small study and they've done a intermediate thing. What they've done is they've taken a long cord and they have put it, hang, hang it, uh, at while resuscitation in the trolley, they hang it on the top of their like vertically. So by gravity, the blood, and in that they have shown that more than 80%, the blood baby receives is almost 80% of what it receives in delayed cord cramping. So, um, and there were a lot of issues like, especially in preterm, which has been debated, but we still need a lot of studies, but that is a great way of, uh, you know, uh, doing a uh, favor to the babies who are depressed at birth especially babies more than 28 weeks. Uh, there are questions, uh, Dr. Amit, if you want to just kind of start with the question, Q and, question and answers box. From yep, so uh, sir, the first question from um, Levert Mamani Flores is, what are the contraindications to delayed cord clamping? Yeah, so there is no real absolute contra contraindication, but there are some relative contraindication. One of them is uh, when there are uh, babies who are twins, uh, monozygous uh, twins, uh, where there is a risk for uh, the transfusion of the blood from the other uh, sibling. So in the first baby, maybe we cannot do a delayed cord clamping. Uh, uh, but the second baby, we should do a, a delayed cord clamping. Uh, 
sometime when there is a abruption of placenta or there is a cut in the placenta this uh, indication for not doing a delayed cord clamping in a baby Okay. I know some people they are concerned. I know some people they are concerned about polycythemia in a baby who are SGA or who are in front of diabetic mother, but uh, we should be doing a delayed cord clamping on those babies. The obstetrician are also a bit wary about uh, doing delayed cord clamping in RH negative mothers and HIV mothers. So, is there any uh, weightage in this concern or uh, or not? because same blood yeah I, 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 yeah I, i don't think there is a good data that they are uh, a contraindicated in a baby who uh, have rh incompatibility or uh, who have uh, the hiv okay thank you <clears throat> so the next question by uh, dr mohammad bahari is if you do immediate cord clamping you stop the only source of oxygenated blood to the baby which is placenta If you are not planning to do bag and mask while the cord is still attached, isn't better to delay cord clamp for 30 seconds and then clamp to give oxygenated blood while resuscitation efforts are underway? Yeah, that, that, that's a really a good question because you know if you are doing immediate cord clamping, you are um, decreasing the blood to the baby. Um, we should stimulate those babies and uh, in 30 seconds, and we should do. Uh, delayed cord clamping or probably for uh, 30 second or so but looking at all the recommendation from all the organization they all say do a immediate cord clamping but you can plan to do do a, a bag and mask ventilation or ventilation or stimulation with a, a intact cord uh, uh, maybe that's a another good area of research to wait for 30 second on those babies and uh, look at the short and long term outcomes till you do initial steps of resuscitation and observation can be uh, clamping could be delayed and then uh, immediately go on for post pressure ventilation after clamping the cord maybe that could be uh, 30 seconds yeah again we, we yeah, again we need to do a study on study, that yep. we cannot we cannot change our practice just change, yep. just, just yeah because a lot of things make sense but uh we need to really uh get a evidence uh, to change our practice okay and but, so but that's a the, but that's a good point i think 30 second of delaying may or may not but to uh, one of the unknown study uh on a premature baby many of those premature baby uh they start breathing uh within 30 40 seconds so Uh, even if you don't do a bag and mask ventilation, you stimulate the baby. Many of those baby they starts breathing. Yep. And Dr. Levert again is here, and uh, she is asking that the the milking procedure, due to rapid administration of blood volume and pressure, does not produce consequences in the neonate. More if it is premature. Example: intraventricular hemorrhage. You have amply answered this question, though. um yeah we, we don't have much data on the full term whatever uh, you had done a lot of study on um like a cord milking in full, full term baby and you didn't see any uh, consequences uh, in a full term baby uh, with this but uh, again we need more study i think the anup study what he is doing right now is going to answer many of those questions and so what length of uh, dr abdul manan wants to know what length of cord would you suggest to milk because it's quite long yeah so if you are doing a intact cord clamping it's about 20 to 25 cm of cord but if you are doing a cut cord clamping uh, the study we showed equivalence with a cut cord clamping and uh, the intact cord clamping they use 30 uh, cm segment So I think if you are doing a yeah, so if you are doing a cut cord clamping, probably you need to milk a uh, longer uh, cord. But if you are doing uh, uh, if you are doing an intact cord clamping, probably twenty twenty five centimeters. We also use twenty five to thirty centimeters in all our studies. Um, mm-hmm. Does umbilical cord milking cause volume overload when baby is not crying? 
Yeah, so, so that's really a concern because that can cause volume overload because what happens after birth, if the baby is not crying, the lung is not open. But with not crying means the baby is not breathing. Not if breathing. the baby is not breathing, then the lungs are not open. So blood is not really pulled uh, to the lung. So if you're giving a extra blood with milking, that may cause uh, increase or volume or load. But can that also milking can also stimulate the respiration. But that's why there is a concern in a babies who are uh, premature because the premature baby, they have more problem with the cerebral autoregulation compared to the full-term baby. If you give a large ba low volume in a full-term baby, probably they can tolerate uh, better because they have better cerebral autoregulation than extremely premature babies. Okay, excellent. So, Mohammed Amir wants to know that babies born to anemic mother are more like to, likely to develop anemia. If anemic mothers are given total infusion of iron in third trimester, the baby born to these mothers are less likely to develop anemia. A study from India and one from South Africa. Please enlighten with your opinion. So about intravenous iron infusion to mother in third trimester. Yeah, so, you know, that's a good point in reducing the iron deficiency in mother and iron deficiency in baby. But just not the iron, even if they have enough iron at birth, uh, that iron is good enough only for the two to three months in a term baby and probably one month for the premature baby. So they need the iron uh, after one month or two months by doing a delayed cart clamping where increasing that storage of the iron. Um, so yes, uh, giving an IV iron to the mother is a good idea to prevent at least the iron deficiency during a very critical period of brain development because most of the brain development occurs even before the baby is born. So even before the uh, delayed cart clamping. So if we can prevent that iron deficiency by giving IV iron to the mother, that may improve uh, brain development and long-term neurodevelopmental outcome. So even if the mother gets uh, IV iron, we still need to do a delayed cart clamping in, in a baby. Dr. That Mohit. was a good question. Yeah. The next question. Yeah. So this is by some anonymous uh, participant. Does the obstructed like, <laughs> I think everybody is scared of obstetrician. That's why they're not writing the name. Does the obstetric team document whether they did delayed cord clamping in your hospitals? Yeah, they do. So every baby we have a documentation of a delayed cord clamping that's a note by the nurses. And when our team is there, the neonatology team, they definitely we document. But yes, uh, the, the delayed cart clamping is documented in our EMR uh, on every baby. And this is one of the QI project. One of, this is one of our, uh, the QI benchmark, how many babies are uh, getting a delayed cart clamping. Because uh, you've seen from the previous studies, a lot of premature babies, they're not getting a delayed cart clamping even in USA. So, um, documenting is important. The first one is when you're documenting, you know how many babies are giving, uh, getting this. But the second thing, when you're documenting, then most of the people will do it because they're not going to document uh, they didn't do a delayed cart clamping. So that's going to reinforce doing a delayed cart clamping. Yeah. So, uh, thank you, uh, Dr. Zubay, for this, because this would be great for countries like India. Like your, your presentation showed that in China, only 30% of the babies born, they have been delayed cord clamping, like those who are admitted to the hospital. In India, if I would take, it will be less than 10% even. So Yeah, I talked to some of the pediatrician and some of the neonatologists uh, in India. I don't think at many places, even in the teaching institution, uh, delayed cord clamping is a reinforced or is a standard of yeah. care. I think we have to change. And I compare this with a surfactant treatment because I know everybody wants to jump on the surfactant treatment because it looks fancy and, and they, but it's so expensive and you have easier way or cheaper way of uh, decreasing mortality than uh, surfactant. Yeah, now the thing is like for, for your fellows, you have to stop them for giving surfactant. 
instead like they will be all ready to give surfactant but if you don't want you it's the senior person has to you know tell no this uh-huh. is you should not wait so i yeah, we, like, we have reduced our surfactant use so much in our uh, in icu or all over the usa because of the non invasive ventilation yeah. even 23 24 weeker if they are on cpap and if they are not requiring a more than 40 50% of oxygen we don't intubate those baby we don't give them surfactant the studies has shown uh, not giving surfactant managing on C- cpap is better than intubating surfactant and keeping them on ventilator so yes you should avoid giving a surfactant is a really a magic drug but uh, it has its own limitation uh, surfactant is really good for the babies who are 32 33 34 weeks because their main problem is a surfactant deficiency the 23 24 week uh, they have surfactant deficiency but their main problem is the lung development so their lung is not developed it's going to take some time uh, so uh, to me the 32 33 34 week uh, they benefit more with the surfactant than uh, 23 24 week yeah very right so dr parthasathi he is asking so do you suggest umbilical cord milking instead of delayed cord clamping for all babies of 30 weeks gestation or more if so are there any standardized method of doing the umbilical cord milk yeah so the first thing is i am not recommending because we don't have study and none of the organization have recommended umbilical cord milking in any baby a depressed baby not depressed baby so we should do umbilical cord milking only in a research setting to generate more data and once we have enough data then uh, we can look at a short and long term outcome and then the organization can make a decision to change the practice so unless the guidelines comes from the organization about changing practice i won't recommend uh, a del- uh, umbilical cord milking and again there is a standard uh, procedure for uh, milking you milk uh, three or four times using a uh, with the intact cord clamping you refill and then you milk three four times uh, there are many videos on how to do umbilical cord uh, milking and in continuation he is being asking in delayed cord clamping are there any is there any use of continuing delayed cord clamping after delivery of placenta yeah so this uh a difficult question as i said most of the blood is uh, transferred uh, between 1 uh, to 3 minutes some people they do a cord uh, delayed cord clamping till the umbilical cord stop pulsating or till the placenta is fail but i don't think we should be continuing it after the placenta is uh, delivered there are some data on a prolonged for 3 more than 3 minutes and probably they have a better um, transfusion but after the placenta is separated i don't think there is any reason to continue um, the delayed cord clamping so in continuation like his question is again will delayed cord clamping or umbilical cord milking interfere with collection of blood for cord blood banking that's really a very important question and yes the delayed cord clamp especially in a premature baby they are not much uh, blood so uh, it 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 affects the collection of blood for uh, the the banking but you know the banking of this blood uh, is probably not much useful especially if you are planning to use it by yourself and there is a recommendation not to use this uh, uh blood bank for your own blood you can use it for donating to other people uh but it's not useful for uh use of your own there is a problem with the storage and you don't know whether you are going to use it or not uh so we don't encourage uh the blood bank blood banking of this umbilical cord blood but yes uh, it will affect because there won't be much blood uh instead of banking this uh, blood in the bank why not just give it at the same time after they are born and uh so many commercial uh, um, units they are doing milk uh, the milk bank uh, this uh, umbilical cord banking and mm-hmm. so delayed cord clamping um, 
has to be abandoned in such babies because uh, they say that the volume left after we wait for 30 seconds is quite less and so they have already been convinced by uh, the obstetrician or obstetrician has been convinced by the parents that they want to do uh, this banking and so they then the obstetrician they refuse delayed cord clamping or the company person says sir we can't do delayed cord clamping because of this this is a problem which i have encountered at times yeah i think this is uh, because of the commercialization of this uh, banking and as i said they are not really useful for themselves it can be used yeah, nobody knows what the use people. are yeah yeah and we don't know the, how the cord blood is going to be when we need it uh, whether the company will be there 20 years later when we need it that's yeah. also not known uh, yeah yeah uh, i think if uh, the full term baby um, may or may not but in a premature baby re- we should really really try to convince the parent that there's so much benefit with the uh, delayed cord clamping in premature baby uh, they should they should do a delayed cord clamping yes you have already answered this next question about uh, mono chorionic uh, gestation twins that there it's a relative contraindication so we can move on to less please comment on hematocrit of these neonates under study um mini rani akhori has asked which study dr mohit can you make out what the, dr manjusha k what the, what does she plan to ask hematocrit of these neonates under study i don't know if uh, dr manjusha wanted to ask the study like they have undertaken for uh, cord milking no. maybe i don't know yeah. that is the thing uh, okay. dr manjusha yeah. wants to ask and then and this went back from from like maybe yeah so yes the cord milking or delayed cord clamping increase hemoglobin a hematocrit hematocrit but uh, i have shown and people have shown it does not increase the risk for symptomatic polycythemia just a polycythemia uh, really does not mean much and we don't have to do much for the uh, polycythemia if the crit is uh, less than 75 and the baby is uh, not symptomatic okay dr bashan gouda wants to know what is the scientific basis for mechanical ventilation with an intact cord though you have uh, already explained it but if you could say add a, a few words on this yeah so when you do a, a ventilation uh, you are trying to open the lung when you open the lung uh, the more blood is going to flow uh, to the lung and uh, that's going to decrease the volume overload in the systemic circulation and also uh, once you open the lung that's going to improve the left ventricular uh, preload because the more blood is going to the lung so the more blood is going to come to the left side of the lung and that will improve the left ventricular uh, preload okay that's great and dr prakash wants to know recommendations for delayed cord clamping in single versus multiple just uh, preterm gestation yeah again you know the single and multiple gestation multiple gestation if they are not uh, monozygotic and there is uh, no risk for uh, twin to twin transfusion and then we should do a delayed cord clamping on all multiple gestation but if they are homo uh, they are monozygotic and there is risk for uh, twin to twin transfusion then we should avoid in a first uh, twin okay and dr prashant gouda continues his question over uh, ventilating the with intact cord is how long do we ventilate with intact cord so the ventilation is for the baby if the baby is not breathing then you should keep ventilating uh is a delayed cord clamping is 1 to 3 minutes so you should stop uh we should cut the cord uh, after 1 to 1 yeah 1 to 3 minutes but you should continue ventilation the ventilation is the baby is not breathing so as long as they are not breathing we should continue uh to ventilate those babies okay that's great dr rohit shashidharan wants to ask you, why can't we go for physiological cord clamping instead of delayed cord clamping Uh, where it can uh, where we can wait till placental separation as 
what is seen in nature in animals when we do an umbilical cord milking it's not physiological there may be increase in blood volume but how will it ensure oxygenation especially once the cord is cut so we are we are not recommending umbilical cord milking for yeah. or we are not we are doing a study in a depressed baby where uh, delayed cord clamping is not feasible uh, i i don't think there is a good data for a physiological uh, comparing a delayed cord clamping for 1 to 3 minutes versus a physiological uh, when the cord uh, when the placenta is separated uh, i don't see any short and long term uh, benefit for that because most of the blood is transferred within 1 to 3 minutes after birth and there would be practical issues as well waiting for the baby while the placenta separates and um... <laughs> just waiting for more long time yeah uh, good morning everyone from mexico so dr emilio wants is joining from mexico and uh, wants to ask uh, he says congratulations to you sir it was an extraordinary presentation which we all agree with clear and very dynamic yes indeed why would it not be recommended to milk the umbilical cord in term infants do you have repeated it often if you could uh, yeah yeah thank you very much for the compliments and the, again i am going to say yes we are doing a study on umbilical cord milking in a term baby who are depressed at birth uh, once we should wait uh, for milking all those baby till we get the results from this clinical trial again there are two uh, concern one is a uh, safety because we are milking the cord so we are increasing the uh, probably a uh, cerebral uh blood flow we don't know the impact of that in a, a baby who are depressed at birth uh the second thing is we need to see a long term benefit of this uh umbilical cord milking so all those can be answered with a clinical trial so we should wait for the results of the clinical trial before uh doing umbilical cord milking in all babies using this as a standard of care Okay, and sir, uh, Dr. Lela wants to know: Do you know the reason or mechanism for increase in severe IVH in extreme preterm babies? Is it fluid overload or cerebral autoregulation dysfunction? That, that, that's really, really a good question because uh, I think uh, Anoop he has looked into it. Why those babies were uh, had a severe intraventricular hemorrhage? So, if we look into uh, the first one, is definitely the or Uh, circulation and uh, because of the uh, impaired auto regulation in those tiny babies uh, the more blood is going into the brain and going into the germinal matrix and causing bleeding but the few other things anoop has looked into it and when he looked into, into his data there was a more severe ventricular hemorrhage in a babies who were born uh, vaginally or the normal delivery versus the c section and you know most of the baby who are born vaginally they have a preterm labor and most of the preterm labor is associated with chorea and unitis so when he looked into the data more carefully a uh, lot of those baby they had a co- histological chorea and unitis uh, who has a intraventricular hemorrhage again the uh, histological chorea and unitis can uh impaired cerebral auto regulation and can increase the risk for ivf and so there is a question which i received on whatsapp by a dear friend uh, dr kiran more from qatar he says that excellent talk professor zubair very comprehensive and covering this topic with concerns from helix trial and potential benefit of delayed cord clamping in depressed infant Do you think we should try to do RCT with two interventions for developing countries, DCC with erythropoietin or DCC with melatonin? So can we add these two drugs, melatonin and erythropoietin, in the uh, jigsaw pa- puzzle? Yeah, that, that, that's a really a good question because, as I said, uh, you know, one intervention is not enough for HIE. Even with a therapeutic hypothermia, we still have 50% of our babies uh, they develop either die or develop they develop a moderate to severe HIE. So, 
one intervention is not going to be enough. So if you're just doing a, a delayed card clamping, that intervention may not be enough. We need to combine with uh, some other intervention. But before we combine these, we need to see whether individually they are effective or not. So we should wait for the trial on the melatonin and um, uh, erythropoietin and then the delayed card clamping or umbilical card milking. If some of them are effective or has some effect, then we can combine uh, more than one. But uh, I think initially we should look at uh, the individual uh, therapeutic options, whether they really improve uh, neurodevelopmental outcome in HIE or not. So yeah. that was a good question. Yeah. Because we need we need a multiple uh, intervention for this HIE because looking at the etiology and pathophysiology, uh, we can't uh, treat this uh, HIE with uh, only one intervention. Excellent, excellent. That's true. And Dr. Prashant Goda wants to know if there is any benefit of transferring the stem cells by delayed cord clamping or milking. So that's what we are doing when you're doing a delayed cord clamping and milking. You are doing a stem cell a transplant. As I said, somebody has mentioned the delayed cord clamping is a first natural umbilical cord uh, transplant. There is a study from um, uh, Atlanta where they uh, gave this uh, babies uh, the same they you know in a babies they stored uh, cord blood and when this baby developed a HIE they used that cord blood and they separate the separated the mononuclear cells and they gave it to the baby who developed HIE and as I said earlier the amount of blood they are giving um, for treatment of this HIE is similar to what uh, they get it with a delayed card clamping or umbilical card milking. So umbilical card milking or delayed card clamping is a stem cell transplant for those babies. And so there are too many questions. I would um, ask uh, Dr. Manoj, do we have more time? But till he tells us that, uh, there is a question by Dr. Escobar Cruz, that what would be the optimal position of newborn with respect to maternal pelvis? during late clamping of umbilical cord? Yeah, I, I think it's uh, putting the baby on the belly or the chest is uh, good for bonding. And I think that's what we should uh, recommend. Uh, but instead of uh, delaying cord clamping only for 30 or 60 seconds, probably we should do a more uh, prolonged delayed cord clamping, maybe two minutes or so. I think there is a study which showed if you do a two minutes of a uh, delayed cord clamping, if uh, when you're putting the baby on stomach, uh, uh, that is the same as uh, delayed cord clamping when you're keeping the baby below the placenta. So you just, uh, I, I encourage to put the baby on uh, stomach and or, or the abdomen and just uh, do a delayed cord clamping for longer period of time. Yep, and there are just two about uh, any side effects on uh, of delayed clamping or milking on uh, in preterm babies on ROP and uh, um, what was it asked on ROP? Yeah, that, that's really an interesting question. And in fact, uh, delay, the umbilical cord milking and some of the delayed cord clamping data has shown uh, that decreases the risk for the ROP. Uh, in, in a baby, the delayed cord clamping and umbilical cord milking. Uh, Anup has some of the this data and what he is thinking is when we do, um, you know, the oxygen saturation at five minutes, that's a important mar marker for the mortality and morbidity. Uh, by doing a delayed cord clamping or umbilical cord milking, you can improve the oxygen uh, saturation at five minutes. By improving oxygen saturation at five minutes, uh, probably you can decrease the risk for uh, ROP and other uh, morbidity in premature babies. Okay, and any effect on ductal closure? Yeah, I showed that too. Again, this is a volume. So whenever you're giving a more volume, that's going to affect your ductal closure. And the meta-analysis from a uh, clinical trial comparing a, a delayed card clamping and an umbilical card milking with an immediate card clamping has shown there was a trend towards more uh, treatment for PDA, uh, medical as well as, well as surgical, 
uh, in a baby who received delayed cart clamping and uh, who received umbilical cord milking. But again, the management of PDA is uh, so subjective now. Uh, um, we, we try to ignore PDA nowadays. We don't treat them unless the baby is really, really on ventilator, but the data was done even uh, before we change our practice of treating a treatment of PDA. So yes, it may affect physiologically because if there is a more volume, uh, the duct is uh, more likely to be open. And how can COVID be left out in any discussion? So is your practice of delayed cord clamping different in COVID positive mothers uh, as compared to COVID negative ones? Yeah, that's, that's, that's a really, really a good question. So when the COVID came initially, we were not, uh, we stopped doing a delayed car clamping on those babies. Then later on, we saw uh, it's really the vertical transmission of COVID is so, so rare. And the benefit of a delayed car clamping, even the breast milking, you know, breastfeeding, initially we stopped breastfeeding, but now the practice has changed. So in a COVID baby nowadays, uh, we are doing a, a delayed cord clamping. We are trying not to put the baby on the uh, belly when we are doing a delayed cord clamping. We are just keeping holding near the pelvis, uh, um, so so the baby is not getting in directly contact with the mother with the skin to skin uh, care. But we are doing a delayed cord clamping in a baby who are, who are mother who are COVID positive. That's an excellent question, and it changed so much in the last six months, starting yeah. from not. <laughs> COVID is an ever-changing scenario. Yeah. Uh, and can you, uh, Dr. Kishore Sangvi, a very senior uh, pediatrician neonatologist, he wants to know if, can you please define umbilical cord milking? Uh, you have already done so. How many times over how much length and how uh, over how much time? Yeah, so I, I think I defined it. So it's about 20 to 30 uh, centimeters of segment. You do two to five times. Uh, some people, they do three or four. I think the four is probably the optimal time. And most of the time, it takes less than 20 seconds. So you can do it in uh, less than 20 seconds. Okay. And uh, Dr. Claudia Rota wants to know if in depressed term babies, Umbilical cord milking increases cerebral blood flow. In your opinion, this means a blood overload if the pulmonary circulation is in fetal circulation. Does it increase risk of cerebral reperfusion? So does umbilical cord milking increase the risk of cerebral reperfusion? Can you suggest the resuscitation with intact fetal circulation as a standard of care for term babies nowadays? So the second question, th those are excellent questions. So the coming to the second question first, uh, the ventilation with the uh, uh, intact card. So if you look at, if you are following the helping baby breathe guidelines, they do recommend uh, delaying the card clamping and do a uh, ventilation uh, with the intact card. So if you are doing it, uh, that is recommended by helping baby breathe. Uh, coming back to the umbilical cord milking, yes, it can affect uh, um, cerebral blood flow, but full-term baby, they have uh, better cerebral autoregulation and full-term baby, they don't have a germinal matrix. So the risk of intraventricular hemorrhage is much, much more. Uh, regarding the reperfusion injury, uh, I... I don't have any data. I think we need to do more study with the uh, um, umbilical cord milking is going to cause a reperfusion injury. Again, uh, it's very hard to look at the reperfusion uh, injury real time. Uh, probably the long-term neurodevelopmental outcome is going to show you if uh, uh, there was a reperfusion injury with the umbilical cord milking. Uh, there is the highest. Uh, there is uh, sorry. Uh, in between, there were one uh, few questions. Like I don't know, Doctor Rutul is asking like, what is your idea or uh, take for delayed cord clamping in babies with antenatal abnormal umbilical artery dopplers, like reverse or absent doppler flow? So what are your take? Yeah, yeah. So, so yeah, so 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 that's a good question. Uh, when the baby they have abnormal uh, doppler. Probably they have uteroplacental insufficiency. Many of those babies may be polycythemic. Uh, 
but we still do a uh, delayed card clamping on those baby uh, if the blood is not flowing that's a different story but uh, we try to do a delayed card clamping on those babies too And similarly, somebody has asked, Dr. Pradeep Sharma is asking, in severe IUGR, is it recommended uh, delayed cord clamping is to be done? Yeah, it is recommended in all baby, even if they are severe IUGR. Uh, I know they can be a polycythemic, but I think there was a study recently published, I think uh, last year or so, where they looked into the data on delayed cord clamping in a babies who were SGR, IUGR. And it is safe in those babies. Dr. Amit, please continue. So uh, we are just going for the last question. And because it has been a very long time for sir to continuously speak for almost 90 minutes now. So oxytocin timing. Oxytocin is often given to mothers soon after delivery of the baby. And so have you changed the oxytocin timing till the delay, uh, clamping has been uh, uh, delayed? because it will it may be transferred to the baby through clamping so the uh, dr rohit uh, shashidharan wants to know about oxytocin timing after delayed cord clamping yeah you know we do a delayed cord clamping for about a minute or so i don't think they are infusing oxytocin during that time but i i need to discuss with my obgyn and what they are doing i don't think they change any practice but I don't have an answer for that. That's an interesting question. Okay. Um, yeah, so in one of the talks I have just heard, like especially in India, the centers, what they were practicing delayed cord clamping, they intentionally informed the anesthetist not to give oxytocin till the cord is being clamped. So till they delayed cord clamping, they don't infuse oxytocin to the mother. Like this is what they discussed and the similar, same question was asked there in few of the centers who were practicing delayed cord clamping in India. So they were telling anesthetists not to give oxytocin. Okay. Even I don't have okay. the idea much. So can we wind up now, Dr. Mohit? I think so. We should. Uh, it's really tiring for Professor Zubair. Oh, yes. There are many, many no, no, more no. Yeah, you, you know, yeah, if you want, you can send my email if people have questions. Yes, yes, yes. We will circulate email. that, sir. Yeah, yes. they can so, answer a question. Yeah, this, so, this was a great audience. They had a really a great uh, questions. And uh, I'm happy that uh, we had so much uh, discussion after the talk. And uh, uh, thank you, everybody, again. And, and, uh, Amit, Mohit, and Manoj for uh, giving me this opportunity and NNF. Uh, it was fun. It was great. Over to, to you, Dr. Manoj. Well, uh, thank you so much, uh, Professor Subair. Uh, as usual, it's a pleasure listening to you. Uh, we have, actually we wanted your session uh, in last year itself but somehow it did not work out now we are running on the neonatal hemodynamic sessions from this one onwards maybe we are having a, a, except the session in the last week of february next few sessions are going to be on neonatal hemodynamics so thank you so much for jo joining us it's a great pleasure for us and then we hope you continue to be with us uh, and uh, join us for the uh, the physical meeting IAP Neocon which is scheduled in September also. And I should also thank uh, the excellent moderation by the two legends in neonatal hemodynamics uh, from India, Dr. Mohit Saini and Dr. Amir Rupatyai. Thank you so much. And, yeah, uh, and, I, and, and I, tol I totally agree with you. I think they did an extraordinary job moderating this session. Uh, congratulations, Amit and Mohit. Excellent. excellent. And uh, b before we close, uh, let me thank all of you, the dear delegates, because it was a mar marvelous to have uh, uh, the representation from so many uh, countries. And then we continue to receive YouTube uh, uh, viewership in the next 24 hours because of the time zone match. Uh, some of the uh, uh, delegates watch later, but it's a, uh, it's a honor to have you all with us for this series. And uh, talking of time zones, uh, 
the next in the neonatal hemodynamic series is on a different timing we used to have at 7 30 pm indian time but next one because the faculty professor koya diwal is from australia to suit his timing so we are going to have the next session the next session alone at 4 30 pm on thursday 11th february i cordially invite all of you to join us for this as well and continue to be with us for the hemodynamic series with patrick mcnamara and other legends in the series so thank you so much uh, have a good day have a good night uh, uh, until we see you next time thank you okay Manoj, thank you very much thank Bye -bye. you sir thank you sir we will keep in touch thank you very much. Okay. Thank you.